Senator Vanderpute has been very busy this session and is looking forward to what is to come in the next couple of months. Well, the 83rd legislative session started out very quickly, but if you look at the calendar, we probably have a little, just a little bit more than 80 days left to complete the work. Most importantly is the work that we have to do on the budget. I am always so very proud of the really the issues that I get to work on here in the Texas legislature. And since 2003, I have had the opportunity and the honor of chairing the Veteran Affairs and Military Installations Committee. This is the committee that really focuses on two things, and that is the quality of life issues for our active duty military members and their family, and everything that goes about on our 15 uh, installations and uh, the National Guard. And then it also deals with the 1.7 million veterans and their families in this state and our goal to be number one in the country. That Texas really needs to show its leadership uh, by having a great quality of life and opportunities for our 1.7 million veterans and their families. On Wednesday, March 6th, Senator Vanderbilt held the second Veterans Affairs and Military Installations hearing of the session. Our hearings were focused on the Hazelwood Act. Hazelwood is not a federal program. It is a state program enacted by the legislature after World War I. It allows a veteran to utilize 150 credit hours at any public university or college. It's a way to say thanks to our veterans for securing our freedom, the reason that we have a representative democracy, the reason that we're able to debate freely. And so the legislature almost 100 years ago put in this Hazelwood program. Over the years it's been expanded to the children of those who have paid the ultimate price of those killed in action or the spouse of those killed in action. And it's also been extended to those dependents and spouses of our military members who are 100% disabled due to their military service. Now, that has been in effect for a very long time. But in 2009, the legislature, in an acknowledgement that it's not just the military member that serves, but the entire family, created what is called the Hazelwood Legacy Act. And the Legacy Act really says the veteran is due and has earned 150 credit hours at our public universities and colleges. But if they don't use them, they don't use all of them, they're able to pass that to a dependent child or a spouse. Mm -hmm. That happened in 2009 and it has been incredibly successful. We have had an increase of those students being able to utilize and get a college education. Unlike other programs where the state puts in direct revenue dollars for grants or programs and the federal bill, uh, that federal GI bill brings money into the state. The Hazelwood Act has never been a direct appropriation from the state. For over a hundred years now, almost, we've expected our universities to absorb that cost. So they, veterans in the Hazelwood, don't have to pay tuition and certain fees. Well, in the terrible budget cuts of 2011, where our universities were cut over $1.2 billion, they were feeling the pinch. And with a growing number of Hazelwood legacy students and a real decrease in state funds, a lot of our universities began to complain. Now, I have to tell you firsthand, I, am, I, I understand their complaints. I understand that it's difficult with dwindling state resources. But I took great offense when some university presidents would say that our Hazelwood benefit is a burden to them. Because those of us in Texas know that our military families have the ultimate burden. As one veteran testified yesterday, every service member that signs up signs a blank check. They take that oath to serve in our nation's military. And when they write that check to the United States of America, he said it's up and even including death. There are very few individuals. In fact, only 1% of 
of America's population. Sign that blank check. And so I have a real difficulty finding any sympathy with someone who thinks our military are a burden to us. So our responsibility, and as testimony showed yesterday, with all of the university system chancellors in attendance and testifying, and those representing community colleges, is to tell their side of the story. Now, testimony yesterday showed they wanted to be military friendly, they want veterans on campus, and they want their families on campus. But they just want the state to either start formula funding these students or to understand that in dwindling dollars that they either have to raise tuition or they have to cut services on other programs. And we understood. But I think the sentiment yesterday from the students who are using Hazelwood and those veterans who are using Hazelwood really explains how necessary this benefit that they have earned is utilized. So we're going to continue to work on this, but I think the sentiment from the committee yesterday is we don't want to reduce the number of credit hours, and we certainly don't want to say, well, one service member deserves it, but another doesn't, because they all take the same oath. Whether they're deployed to combat duty or not, they sign that blank check that says, I will give my life for my country, and they don't know if they're going to be deployed. So let's keep that, Hazelwood, and that's what the testimony yesterday reflected.